Hello, in this video, I'd like to show how to graph a polynomial in Desmos. Here, I've entered the polynomial and hit enter. And I see that the graph crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 3. So I know that that's a root. And I can also see that x plus 3 is a factor. Therefore, x minus 3 is a root. So there's a nice connection between the factors and the roots or the zeros of the function. And then I can see that there is another zero over here. It's located at x equals 2. And this has a multiplicity of 3. And I know that because there's an exponent of 3 on that particular factor. Now, my graph is decent. It's not amazing. And the reason why it's decent is I do see the places where it crosses the x-axis, but it looks like there's some minimum value that's falling off the graph. And I'd really like to show that if I want to show a, a good visualization of this graph. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to the wrench icon and adjust, adjust the graph settings. Now I could have just hit the zoom out button and that might be helpful, but the wrench icon will help us get a better visualization of the graph. So for the x-axis, I don't think I need anything bigger than negative 5 to 5. So I'm going to adjust that. And then for that y-axis, I need a pretty big number. So let's choose negative 100. And if, if I overdid it, I can always fix it up later. But let's see how that looks. I can zoom out a little bit. And that looks like a great visualization of the graph. And I say that because we've shown the important features. We've shown where the graph crosses the x-axis. We've shown where the graph crosses the y-axis. And we've also shown any uh, minimum or maximum values. Now, I know that this function scoots off to infinity um, as x gets bigger and bigger. So I don't have anything else to zoom out on um, up there. For the next part of the discussion, you will be asked to identify where the function is increasing and where the function is decreasing. And what we mean by this is, as I'm looking at the graph, reading from left to right, a decreasing region is where the graph is going downhill. So it looks like the graph is going downhill all the way until I get to some point around here. And you can estimate that point. Um, if you want to try to find that point exactly, you could do that. But the idea of the discussion is to generally find the regions it's decreasing. You don't have to find the point um, you know, to any particular decimal point. Um, in calculus, you would definitely find the exact value of this minimum. But for our purposes here, uh, saying that the function's decreasing as x goes from negative infinity all the way up to about negative 1.7, that would be really good. Now, is there any other place where the function's decreasing? Well, let's see what happens after this point. As we keep on going from negative 1.7 roughly, and we keep on going. It looks like the function is increasing. I hit a flat spot here at x equals 2. And then I keep on going. And so it looks like it's increasing for this entire interval uh, around negative 1.7. And then continuing x to infinity. So you've got regions where it's going uphill, regions where it's going downhill. Um, and that becomes a big theme for Calculus 1 later on. But right now, we just want to get a rough estimate of where the function is increasing and decreasing. Now, the last thing I want to point out here is that uh, for your second reply, you will be asked to graph a rational function. So let's just take a look at a, a fairly small, simple example, which is x plus 1 times x plus 2 divided by x plus 2. So I will readjust my viewing window for the graph. And probably something like, you know, negative 10 to 10 would work well here. Okay. 
Um, but what's a little bit suspicious is it looks like we have a linear equation. In fact, it looks like we have the line y equals x plus 1. Now, that's almost true, except that noting the denominator here has a factor of x plus 2 in it, we need to exclude this value of x equals negative 2. So this point where x equals negative 2, go there on the graph, we see it is undefined. Desmos knows this, but when it plotted the the graph, it looked like that was a solid point. We do need to emphasize that there is an open circle there. And certainly when we scoot our cursor along, we see the open circle. Um, but in the general graph, it, it wasn't very obvious that that was an undefined point. So let's make that really obvious when we, when we graph this. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to another line in Desmos, and I'm going to plot the point negative 2 comma, negative 1. And then I'm going to choose the type of circle I want to put there, which is an open circle. And I'm going to make it really big so it's obvious what it is. So now this graph looks really good. I can see that I've got all these points to the right and to the left, but when I get to this point, negative 2, comma, negative 1, that is an open circle. It's an undefined point in the graph. And so if I wanted to talk about the domain of this function, now it's really obvious that I've got all the x values from negative infinity up to this value, but not including x equals negative 2. And then on the other side, I've got everything from negative 2, not including it, to positive infinity.